Bolt is great at building the user interface and the logic of your app. But how should you store your app's data? Today we're going to learn how to integrate Bolt with a free database using a service called Firebase. First of all, if you're not a web developer, you might be wondering why do we even have to care about a database? Apps built with Bolt can store things somehow and there's a deploy button that puts my app on the server. Isn't that enough? Well, not exactly. Think of it this way. You often see a tool that you can use as a website, an iPhone and an Android app at the same time. To make this possible, all these apps need to have the access to the same data. That's why a real-life database is usually treated a bit separately from these other pieces and oftentimes it's even placed in a different server than our website. So let's get back to our project. This is the app that I've built in the last video. A habit tracker with a dashboard, the habits to take off on a given day, the ability to add a new one and finally a calendar showing my progress. Right now when I refresh the page, my data still shows up. So it looks like the app is persisting it somehow, but it might be a little bit deceptive. Let me explain. Let's open Chrome Developer Tools to see what's going on. Here in the Application tab, we can go into Local Storage and find our data right here. To prove it, let's remove these entries and refresh the app. And now our data is gone. Local storage is useful for many things, but it's worth knowing its limitation. It's, well, local. It stores the data in your browser, which means that if you open the same Bolt app on a different laptop, you won't have the access to that data. Even if you open it on your original laptop, but on a different browser, and even if you're logged into Bolt, you also won't have the access to the original data. So instead, let's connect our app to a proper database. For this, I've picked Firebase because it's popular and also packs a lot of interesting features we might explore in the following videos. But let me know if there are other solutions I should cover in the future. A cool thing about Firebase is that they have a pretty generous free offering. So if you're just ramping up and initially your app won't have a crazy amount of activity per month, you should fit within the limit with no costs whatsoever. I'll just click start now and get to the Firebase dashboard. But if this is your first time using Firebase, you'll need to log into a Google account as well. From here, let's create a new project and give it a name. To make this simple, we'll skip the analytics for now and click continue. After a couple of seconds, the project is ready and we can click continue again. And let's pick the no cost plan. So here's our project overview. A Firebase project can include multiple databases and other stuff. So from this page, you can add and configure these additional services, create the databases, manage security and so on. In our case, we'll use this page to get the connection details and create a database. The connection details will tell our habits application how to reach Firebase. Because we're building a web app, we can get this information by choosing the web option here. Let's pick a descriptive name that will represent our app. And now Firebase provides us with the instructions how to prepare the code. Now, if you're recording your project by hand, you would have to follow these instructions to the letter, but Bolt only needs the actual config values. So let's just copy that part. We'll use it in a second, but now we should do one more thing, and that is to create the actual database. Let's pick Cloud Firestore and click Create Database. We can leave the default name and location and click Next. And here's the very important part, setting up the access rules. For the purpose of this video, let's set it to a test mode, which will allow anyone to access the data for the next 30 days. Thanks to this, we won't have to deal with the authentication and authorization, and we can jump straight into using the database. But we'll need to adjust it eventually, so this will be a topic for the very next video. For now, let's click Create, and in a few seconds, we have a fresh, empty database. It's time to move back to Bolt and use it. I'll ask Bolt to store the data in Firestore and give it my Firebase config that I've copied a minute ago. Bolt now updates the dependencies to add the Firebase library. It sets up a file with our Firebase configuration and creates the functions for reading and writing to the database. It also updates our habit app components to use these functions.
Let's try it and add a new habit. After the app restarts, I'll add a workout and we have a problem. It shows some invalid argument error. And without digging into that, let's see if Bolt can solve it. Okay, from what it tells us, it looks like our app was generating an ID for the habit while Firebase expects to create it itself. So that was fixed. Let's try once more. And again, invalid argument. But this might be a different argument. So fix it again, please. Yeah, indeed, this time Firebase wasn't happy about the value we're sending when the description of the habit is empty, and now Bolt modified that logic. So third time is a charm and success. Okay, we valid the habit. Now we can look for that in the Firebase dashboard. Note that when the first set of data, what Firebase calls a collection, is added, it might not update automatically on this page, so you might have to refresh it. And here's our workout entry. Let's try this one more time, add another habit, and this time it automatically updates and shows as a second item in the habits collection. We can even modify it here and see that change reflected in our app. There's one last adjustment that I think we should make here before we wrap. It's how we store the connection configuration. This information, especially the API key, shouldn't be exposed to anyone and it's best to make sure it's not even a part of the code base. That's why it's a good practice to keep this value in a special .env file. If in the future we'll want to store this project on GitHub, we'll set this file as ignored. And in case of Bolt right now, this specific file is already automatically being removed for anyone viewing your project other than you as a project owner. Now let's add some more data. Oh, and actually, let's double check that it's not being stored in the local storage anymore. Which it's not. Instead, it's nicely persisted in the Firebase. Time to deploy it. After the deployment, it's still connecting to the same database, so everything works as it should. I hope it was useful and you've learned a thing or two. Stay tuned for the next one where we'll add authorization, user accounts, logging in and out, and all that necessary stuff. And let me know in the comments what other topics you'd like me to cover next.